Welcome to the We Talk Health podcast, the official podcast for West Tennessee Healthcare. Please be advised that this podcast is not intended to replace any medical advice. Always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing said in this podcast is intended to supersede or supplement the direction of your medical caretakers. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at wetalkhealthpodcast at gmail.com and we will do our best to answer any questions you may have. Welcome to another episode of We Talk Health. My name is Will Cashagro, and joining me today is Kathy Sudbury, Brian Thorne, and Andy Aiken. All of them are associated with Sports Plus and Lift Therapy in downtown Jackson. Brian is a physical therapist and the program manager of Lift Therapy, and Andy Aiken is also a physical therapist. How are y'all today? Doing great. Good. Thanks, Good. Will. Good. Thanks for coming in today. And we're going to be talking about neck pain. Now, this is pretty applicable to me. I've as long as I can remember since I was a kid I've had neck pain my mom says it's because I was in a car wreck when I was a kid and it jolted me I'm excited to talk about this because I get to learn maybe how to fix it so uh, I guess my first question would be how common is neck pain you're not alone it's about one in five people actually currently have neck pain so oh really that's a lot just in that but over 50 percent of the population will have some neck pain in, in the last six months so there's a lot of folks out there like mm-hmm. you that have neck pain. The bigger problem or the bigger outlook of that is once an individual has neck pain, there's a one in three chance that they will become a chronic neck pain person, oh. which means lasting over six months or longer. So those are the type of pep, uh, population we want to do without or, or, or enhance before they get to that level. Mm-hmm. Are there more common ways for people to acquire neck pain than others? It's a great question, Will. There's several ways you can get neck pain through trauma, just as maybe you alluded to just a moment ago, maybe you fell, uh, maybe in a car accident, mm-hmm. um, maybe it's something as simple as fell asleep in the wrong position. Uh, <laughs> many times your segments in your neck uh, can become uh, bound up and create some problems, some local inflammation that can, if not treated uh, soon enough, can develop into some more chronic, more serious conditions. So we want to try to address these things early, mm-hmm. which is one of the reasons why we're excited about talking to you today. Um, uh, before I forget, we want to mention that uh, you can get to a physical therapist uh, through a program called Direct Access, mm-hmm. uh, where you just call us directly, and you can find that if you just Google the Lift Wellness Center here in Jackson, mm-hmm. and scroll down, hit the therapy button, scroll down at the bottom, it gets our phone number. You can just call us and talk to either Andy or myself, Okay. and uh, we can talk through your situation with you and decide uh, if you can come to us directly without needing a physician's order yeah. for approximately a month, as long as we're showing progress. And maybe we can help you with that and uh, avoid some of these expensive tests or measures or yeah. hopefully prevent surgery or, or anything like that and get it taken care of early. That's great. I've actually gonna, I'm going to link the phone number at the bottom of the podcast. So if, listeners, if you guys want that number, it's going to be there as well. So how can physical therapy help with neck pain? I know that might be kind of a broad question. Yeah, that, but no, that's fine. The first thing we want to do is manage your pain. Mm-hmm. The second thing is to restore normal mobility, and we'll talk more about that. But the third thing is we want to have long-term stability of the neck, and that comes through specific physical therapy and training. So I guess uh, in a broad scope, those three things are what we address mostly in physical therapy. Yes, we'll see uh, patients come in with all different types of pain. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some are what we call more irritable, Uh, not the person, but the pain. Uh, (laughs) Exactly. uh, I'm sure the pain can make the person more irritable as well. (laughs) Exactly, for sure. I've experienced that myself. We try to manage that pain, whatever stage it's in. And Mm -hmm. sometimes we can handle that. Many times we can handle that ourselves. Uh, Sometimes we'll need to uh, work directly with a physician and we'll kind of work that out and get the appropriate analgesics and medications and things to help control that in a proper way and get a person to the point where they can go through some therapy with some good benefits, not to exacerbate the problem. Uh, but there's many stages of that, uh, and we'll help you talk through uh, people get in touch with us. We can just talk through and, and see if uh, you're ready for therapy or not at that okay. stage. Do I would something? like to just touch in on that. When we talked about mobility, mm-hmm. you think about not being able to turn your neck or if you woke up with a stiff neck, not being able to get out of the driveway because you can't turn and look over behind. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's where our manual therapy techniques will come in. We can actually use our manual hands-on techniques to help restore individual mobility to individual segments of the neck along with followed up by range of motion exercises gotcha so so the first thing you want to do is get that range of motion back after you know we take care of the pain and then we talk about long-term stability that that becomes more specific in our training of the 
the deep muscles of the neck. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's some training that goes along with that, teaching which muscles to turn on, which muscles to turn off, uh, just some specific progression of exercise. Well, wow. I know we've done a podcast about manual therapy before, but can you give me like a quick snapshot definition of what that is, just so people have a little bit of context? Sure, it's a, well, it's a hands-on approach. The, uh, some of the studies, the studying that uh, Andy and I have done after graduating from physical therapy school, mm -hmm. uh, we have something called a certification of orthopedic manual therapy or a manual therapist. Uh, so what it is is a hands-on approach to try to restore normal motion and mobility in each segment of the spine. Uh, we can do oh, that in any, okay. any joint of the body. Uh, but all a basic principle of telling patients this uh, in the body is the body functions best in its normal, natural, neutral position. Sure. Uh, that's where it's the safest. That's where it's most pain-free uh, and the strongest. Mm -hmm. and so we want to try to use our manual therapy, hands-on techniques to move those segments back to their original positions so the body can be pain-free and uh, restore your normal movement and then work on to some more maybe possible strengthening issues, stability exercises that Andy was talking about that we can help. He has his own little package of exercises called uh, Stability Six, the Stability Six exercises, which is some some deep, uh, I guess what you call core stability. Uh, just as we hear about, uh, you know, working on your core strength, mm -hmm. people think about your abdominal muscles for the spine, which is very important. Uh, but there's also a, a core to the neck. We don't hear about that. But Andy, do you want to say a quick word about that? Yeah, the deep neck flexors are the, the core muscles of the neck that we really want to try to enhance, and that's where the training comes in. But we get patients in different positions, side-lying, their back, their, uh, on their front, mm -hmm. back, and in different positions, but we try to, to restore those uh, mobility, but using a, a specific type of, like I said, exercises where we teach them what muscles to turn on and what to turn off, how to hold those muscles in certain positions. So it, that's where the training comes in and the progression comes in. So initially, we begin with simple range of motion, and we progress to the stability exercises or the stability six. Okay. This is kind of a funny question, Andy, but for me, uh, would you see these exercises being performed in a gym somewhere? <laughs> can you just find these on the street? You know, Generally you not. That's where, the like to, uh, that's where the training comes in. These are not your normal everyday neck exercises that we, we get to on this stage. And, and this is the, the last stage we get them to. We want to get everybody to the stability six exercises mm -hmm. are these the ones that are going to help you not only in the short term but maybe prevent that neck pain from coming back six months from now yeah. or a year well, from now or three years from now so we're really looking to try to make the neck stronger but in the deeper aspect the core of the neck that's what i was about to ask you andy so it's more of retraining the muscles it's more people have gotten used to pain and they're holding their neck and that muscle's gotten tight correct and, and they've done there's done a lot of research on these deep neck flexors but the, basically what the research says is those people that have had chronic neck pain have very poor strength in their deep neck flexors and once you get that strength returned to normal usually their neck pain goes away hmm. so researchers can have been researching this particular set of uh, muscle groups for a long time but we have to really get in there and train them and do teach them how to, to do the exercises correctly when it gets to that phase. And I, I'm assuming that's kind of hard, too, because you've got that person that's got that chronic neck pain that does not want to move that neck or that muscle <laughs> right. in that direction you're trying to teach them, correct? Yeah, and that's why we do got to do the so first two exercises. phases. Yeah, we got to manage their pain, restore their mobility. And then the last phase of that is the, the core stability exercises. Gotcha. And that's something that we do in the clinic and then at home as well. You said yeah, along we, with that? Yeah, everything we do, we train them and we, and we provide them with a home exercise program. But, yeah, there comes some training with that last phase. Gotcha. I kind of relate this to uh, performance. Mm -hmm. uh, I, used, I, I sing in a, a choir church sometimes, and there's a lot of stage set up here and there. If we're, or if a group is touring somewhere or if you're going to a concert somewhere, they'll perform on a stage. Well, they have to place that stage there and make it a safe, sound, strong structure that they can perform on. Mm -hmm. So if it, it kind of in relation to your deep neck flexors of your neck, if those muscles are strong, it'll hold everything stable so, or, so ah. we can perform properly just as that stage, a traveling stage, if it's set up improperly, it's unstable. They can't perform on it safely. Right. If it is, they can. And it's, uh, so that's kind of where we're going with that deep core strength. Gotcha. That makes sense. So a minute ago, you mentioned like turning on and off specific muscles. Yeah. To me, and again, I'm, un, un, I'm uneducated on this. So 
when I think I need to move my leg to take a step, it's not really a – obviously I'm making the – my brain is telling my leg to move, but I don't think about my muscles in my leg doing it. So I guess my question is, is it a difficult thing to learn how to, quote, unquote, turn on and turn off specific muscles? Yeah, that phase does take some some training. Mm-hmm. But like Brian said, it def- really the first thing you got to do is get the stage. we got to get them in a better posture. Mm-hmm. All of neck pain basically comes down to forward head posture. And then we think about, well, who has forward head posture? Well, who works on a computer? Or who has a cell phone? And what do we do most of our day? So Looking down mostly. We we all, even us physical therapists, we now, if you look at us, we have to do documentation. We're Mm -hmm. in front of a computer now. So everybody has forward head posture. Mm -hmm. If we can just, I mean, the first thing we got to do is is redirect their posture i've got to get your you got to get your head back over your body and there's some very simple techniques we use throughout the day a couple of two or three exercises we teach our patients initially Mm -hmm. not only to do at home let's do let's do one let's do two or three of these every 15 minutes throughout the day let's get our head back over our body let's look up at the ceiling let's do some opposing motions Mm -hmm. Uh, and, get, and we also we had to talk about our shoulders too. We got to get our shoulders back. So there's some specific exercises we do from retraining, but we've got to get the posture first. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, another example of that would be um, if you've ever been bowling, a bowling mm-hmm. ball you can weigh eight pounds. I think the lightest ones that you might see at the bowling alley mm-hmm. up to uh, 15 pounds, but our heads weigh you know eight to 12 pounds. Uh, so if you keep that balanced over your spine, it's it's not that much trouble or difficulty for your muscles but let's imagine if you hold a 10 pound weight straight up over your head Mm -hmm. directly over your head if it's balanced it's okay you can hold it there for a while but if you start to lower it in front of you let's say you Uh, held held that same 10 pound weight out in front of your body i don't know if any of us could hold it more than 60 seconds before our shoulders start to burn and Mm -hmm. ache and fatigue that's the same principle for our heads eight to 12 pounds if it's forward leaning forward looking at your computer or your phone at your desk work We've, we've got to, there's some muscles that's being taken advantage of. Some has a disadvantage. It's causing lots of pain. It's causing tightness, uh, lack of mobility, stiffness, uh, dysfunction. You'll have mm-hmm. some disc bulging over time, degeneration. There's all types of things that can lead to problems from this forward head posture. So, and physical therapy will help educate you on how to set up your workstation or just activities throughout your daily life. Uh, we'll try to get to the root cause and yeah. not only treat, manage the symptoms and pain at the moment, strengthen it for the future, but also to help teach you uh, how to stay out of this trouble in the future. Yeah, to kind of an- answer my question about posture, but what about headaches? Say I'm having, like, really bad headaches. Could that be related to, to neck pain? You know, that's a great question, Will, because we have a lot of patients with headaches, and there's a term called cervicogenic headaches, which means headaches coming from the neck. And we went back to, you know, we're in these forward head postures all day, mm-hmm. and most people believe that their headaches are migraines, or they call them migraines, and we use the term migraines, but most of those headaches are not migraines they're actually coming from the neck and there's been a lot of research on that too and uh, the top th- three neck vertebrae are the c1 two three mm-hmm. those are usually the culprit in these cervicogenic headaches or these ne- or these headaches coming from the neck so not only is posture playing a role like brian said but a lot of times those three uh top cervical vertebrae can be mobilized with our manual therapy techniques Mm -hmm. and with mobilization and with strengthening and with uh, postural exercises they can actually have a great result in reducing these cervicogenic headaches and that we've been thinking hey i've been having headaches for the last 15 years and Mm it must be migraines no they're really coming from your neck and they're very very treatable with with these physical therapy regimens and uh, manual therapy um, so yeah, yeah. Headaches, headaches can come from, from many causes, but uh, one unique thing about physical therapy is during your evaluation process, as the patient is describing their pain symptoms, their cluster of symptoms, and we'll ask, it's up to us really to ask the right questions, if you think about mm-hmm. it, Andy. If we're asking the right questions, we can kind of hone in and drill down to the root cause of where this is coming from. Uh, of course, imaging, testing, like MRIs are fantastic, but if you ask the right questions and perform the right special tests that we do during the evaluation we Mm -hmm. can hone in on where this is coming from such as what andy's talking about the cervicogenic headache uh the the top segment the what we call the co1 is the zero one that's the first segment where the head rests on Mm -hmm. on c1 
cervical segment, first segment. That will refer pain over around the top of the head to the, the eyeball area on the same oh, side. Wow. Uh, this, the C2, a little bit more on the side, around the top back of the head to the side, temporal side of the head there in the temporal spot. And then C3, a little bit farther back on the side. Uh, so there's specific areas of referral patterns of pain for all these nerves and segments uh, from the neck all the way down to the lower spine. We'll do this in each evaluation mm -hmm. uh, when you go see your physical therapist to help hone in. Is this coming from uh, posture? Is this coming from these segments or is there something else going on? Wow. Uh, such as too much caffeine intake or so other causes of headaches. But well, we can help them find those solutions with either us or the appropriate medical personnel. So we can, we can hone in yeah. where that's coming from. Well, you're mentioning the words examination and test. And we that have been to physical therapy, we understand that. But someone that's um, listening today, what exactly when you say a test or what are your evaluation? You know, I know what you're talking about, but I'm just wondering if you can put it in layman terms as well. That's a great question, Kathy. We're trained in this, uh, I mentioned the COMT initials earlier, but it's, a, it's an Australian-based method. Maitland is the, is the proper name of the original method that we studied under, uh, Andy and myself. Uh, it took us about three years to get that certification and training. Uh, but one of the, uh, the basic principles that they use is they'll take, of course, asking the right questions. If you describe your pain when you come in on the first visit, where it's coming from, how it's behaving, how long does it last? When you move certain ways, how does it behave? One is actively, how do you move? Say you turn your head to the left, you say it hurts. Every time I turn my head to the left, okay, show me where it is, how does it behave? Okay, we've logged that information. And then also we'll, they'll divide it in the Maitland method to passively, let me move it. Okay, now let's move it gently. Okay, now move it to the right, no, it doesn't hurt. Move it to the left, oh, there's that same spot. You point to it again, so passively I move. So now we've got two areas to hone in on that spot. And then we do something called a passive accessory movement. That's a mouthful. But basically we'll position the patient comfortably lying down and we will move, we will take our, this goes back to the manual therapy you were mm -hmm. asking earlier, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll put our fingertips uh, or thumbs on a specific segment, move them one at a time very gently and see, it'll, it'll say, okay, well that one, this feels, does that hurt? Does that hurt? No, this does not hurt. Does that hurt? No, this, okay, that kind of feels like my pain. Is this, is this the pain you're here for? Yes, that's my pain. We'll hear that phrase a lot. And so they've, they've moved it and pointed to a spot. We've moved it and pointed to a spot. Uh, we've isolated the specific segment. And then we go into uh, the last phase is the, they call it the neurodynamic approach. That's another mouthful for, we'll test the uh, movement and normal flexibility that, that all your nerve tissue should have. And there are certain little positions and stretches we can place you in very comfortably, very gently, and find uh, is a certain nerve root involved. And uh, it should feel normal in most cases. Uh, if we move, a, it's, it's neural tissue, it's nerve tissue. We put a little gentle glide or stretch on there, and if it, what we call lights up, back to their pain in that same area. And we'll put all that information together, along with some other physical tests of movement tests mm -hmm. uh, that are in research that can all hone us into that one source at one spot uh, without needing imaging at that moment. If we can't find it, of course, we'll send it back to the doctor and, and sure. request that imaging. Possibly, in many cases, we can find it through asking the right questions in mm -hmm. the special test that you're talking about. So you're basically like recreating their pain Absolutely. to figure out where it is. Gotcha. Exactly. How can neck pain present itself? Is it, yeah, it's neck pain, but it is it only really isolated to the neck or can it be in other parts of the body that's coming from the neck? Well, yeah. What, what you can get is beginning with neck pain, starting in the back of the neck or headaches. Then un unfortunately, if this is let go long enough, you can get pain into the shoulder blade, mm -hmm. and get pain into the shoulder. Then you can get pain radiating down the arm to the forearm, the hand, the fingers, the, the fingers can go numb. Usually this is having to do with a disc, but it also can have to do with, with other problems. These, of course, are more serious problems. We mm -hmm. do treat these problems, and we treat them fairly successfully. But, of course, uh, I guess what we're trying to get out there, Will, we would love to see these patients before they get to that level. Right. right? We can treat them. It's a, it takes a, a lot longer to get them better. Mm -hmm. um, some of these patients end up being surgical candidates, unfortunately. But what we would want to really do, without going too much into detail about the arm pain and the shoulder pain maybe we can talk about that another time but i want to i want to address those patients and get to them before they get to that level right because sure. what we talked about earlier 50 percent of the population has had neck pain in the last six months mm -hmm. we got to get to we got to get to those folks those folks before they become chronic before they got all this radiating symptoms down the arm can't we can very much help you in that early six-month phase when you first get neck pain 
that's really where we want it. And we don't have to see you as long. Mm -hmm. We can get you to that stability program earlier without going through as much pain for you, without having a lot of extended physical therapy visits or other tests or other doctor's visits, yep. medications, nerve blocks. Let's get to those patients. Well, yeah, a general principle, uh, such as what Andy was alluding to, getting the patient in early is about nerves, is the more pressure is on a nerve, the more pain, obviously, or numbness or tingling, and the, and the farther down your uh, extremity, such as your arm or hand, it will go, and the more intense it will be. Mm -hmm. As we uh, decrease the dysfunction or pressure on the nerve, aggravation or inflammation around the nerve, uh, those symptoms will move proximally or back towards the shoulder, back towards the neck, back towards the source, and then be uh, abolished or go away, yeah. uh, hopefully, if we get all that uh, pressure uh, removed. So, so Andy was kind of referring to, we want to get that early before there's too much pressure, too much intense pain on a nerve. Uh, nerves do not like to be irritated as most people know <laughs> and uh, if it's too much pressure we don't need to let that happen too long there, there, there in some cases there could be some permanent nerve damage if you let that go uh, mm -hmm. too long with permanent tingling permanent uh, even muscle weakness sometimes uh, in your mm -hmm. hand losing your grip losing your arm strength yeah uh, we, we just don't want to see that happen so even if that is permanent are there ways to like relieve that we do cervical traction which is a, a, a traction machine that, that kind of dis, uh, distracts the spine and holds it in a position, of course, uh, under thorough evaluation from mm -hmm. the patient, how much weight and all that. It's very, I want to say it's very comfortable. We say the word traction, <laughs> uh, patients, uh, their eyes will light up and right. get rather large. But it's, it's very comfortable. You can call it decompression. It's relieving pressure, uh, gotcha. taking pressure off the nerve. It's very comfortable. Most of, I tell, most of my patients, it's true, uh, on our cervical traction, most of my patients will fall asleep because it feels so comfortable. Yeah. Uh, well, so they out. don't want to leave it because <laughs> it is taking the pressure off and the That's pain right. is relieved. Really and we do have a lot of success with the neck traction mm -hmm. with, with those patients that have pain going down one arm. Yeah. So. Yes, there's other forms of traction we do with our hands, uh, mm -hmm. hands-on. Uh, there's a, We use a a towel method as well. We can do uh, traction in many different angles. It doesn't have to be in one specific angle. So if we're having trouble finding the exact uh, spot of comfort for the patient, we can find that. Uh, gotcha. We use other techniques of traction as well. We'll go back to manual therapy. A lot of times it's that one segment that's that's out of place. We can talk about the chain theory. You know, if you get if you got a dog chain, you got one link out of the chain, the rest of the chain doesn't move like it should. If you're yeah. trying to straighten it out, you can't straighten it out if that one link is out. So mm -hmm. uh, that's where we get our hands-on manual therapy approach. We get that one segment that's out of place moving correctly. And then uh, it helps not only with the head posture over the body, but it also helps with the range of motion hmm. of the neck. And sometimes that's the missing link that they need to decompress that nerve or get pressure off that nerve. And then we're always back to posture after right. that too. <laughs> well, well, that's, that's the, un point. the underlying <laughs> thing that needs to be addressed for everyone really is posture. Mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, I'm sitting right here behind this microphone, not presenting the best posture, you know, <laughs> that I should. Don't and worry, it's just kind of, alone. it's kind of like a natural thing at this point almost. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's one thing, uh, once they train you, you'll remember forever because I drive all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm in the car mm -hmm. and you catch yourself leaning forward towards that steering wheel. And one uh, years ago, a therapist said, your ears over your shoulder, pay attention. So when I catch myself leaning in, I pull, you know, pull myself back even in the car because posture is so important. Like I said, that bowling ball just keeps going forward. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that yeah, yeah. heavy head just goes yeah. forward, so yeah. you need to be paying attention. That's the main thing why I want to make sure people realize that they're not only are they helping correct the problem, they're also teaching you to keep it from coming back mm -hmm. and trying to strengthen it that that neck will be stabled. So I'm glad you said that. I feel like having stronger strength in your core and your neck helps with your posture so that leads me to my next question is, is what kind of uh, role does the strength play we kind of alluded to that a little bit with the uh, back to the abdominal muscles for the back uh, if you have a good strong core uh, for the spine you'll decrease your risk of injury and, and you also need to know how to use it properly you can have the strongest muscles in the world but if you don't use them in the proper manner you can also set yourself up for injury and that's <clears throat> some of the more fun that we have in therapy is just teaching and training people uh, will just find out what are you doing through the day? What is your typical mm -hmm. day like? Uh, where do you work? What are you lifting? Where are you sitting? You know, show me exactly and we'll just go through it with them and we'll just show them the safest way uh, gotcha. how to do that. So we, we kind of uh, affectionately refer to it as uh, physical medicine, physical medicine sometimes. So, would, you know, how can we teach you how to move your body properly 
which so you don't end up having to come back and see us but yeah. we're always available if you do yeah well when you say teach uh, a lot of people may think oh well i can just look this up on google yes they can but if they're at a point of that much pain they do need to seek out and see you guys correct they really need to come the exercisers kind of probably out there on the internet but it really needs to be taught by someone professionally do you yeah know, that, like when you're dealing with the neck that's when it comes back to the evaluation that brian was yes. talking about the active range of motion the active assistive range the passive accessory motion where's your pain coming from and is this your pain and then how do we get them to that phase one two three and then to the the specific training of the deep core muscles that Brian was talking about, getting them to those three levels and then progressing them through that, that takes training. That takes uh, an evolution of the whole physical therapy game. Um, so you can't no, you can't. You know, earlier on, you can, the exercises and activities are much more simple. But when you get to the the patient, the pain model. Yeah, I don't think I'd push myself through yeah. a certain pain if it hurts i'm going to stop where mm -hmm. you guys are going to work them through that position to, to strengthen it yeah correct? and and we try uh to perform the initially specifically to perform the exercises with as little pain as possible I and mean, you know the no pain no gain thing is not not popular with physical therapists <laughs> right now because you got to get them you got to train them to do pain free mm -hmm. or very little pain as, as possible uh, because you know once you're in pain pain turns muscle off mm -hmm. um, pain turns muscle off so so we don't want to cause pain uh, that's a that's a good thing for our listeners to hear we do not want to cause pain right. uh, or as little pain as possible in physical therapy while we progress them through full range of motion and into their strengthening aspect you cannot uh, get get that done until you get the pain down yeah kathy mentioned a <clears throat> good point about you know Patients will they'll say this all the time. They'll Google something and, mm -hmm. and try to fix it themselves, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it can be uh, dangerous if you travel down the wrong path Correct. Uh, too much and too far. You know, many areas of the body can produce signs and symptoms that can be similar to each other. But in physical therapy and through the evaluation process, we'll try to find those things and place them in the appropriate uh, clusters of pain or categories of pain that, that should should behave a certain way, a certain pattern, clinical characteristics. If, if it's behaving out of that pattern, and then we have to back up and say, okay, is this really coming from the neck? Is it coming from somewhere else? Or is this a medical problem that we need to just stop and just call your physician to have them join in on the team, find where this is coming from? But that's the, <clears throat> that's the I guess, the great thing about the evaluation process is it's, it's rather lengthy. It could be you know 45 minutes to an hour to spend with a patient. So you're not just in and out in three you know, minutes or five minutes. You know, this is an in-depth uh, question-answer session, mm -hmm. uh, special testing that we've mentioned before. Uh, just really finding out the source, where's this coming from, and to find out what you do through your daily life. So really trying to investigate the whole person, the whole the whole pattern. It's almost like being a private investigator at some yeah. point, <laughs> trying to find out the source of this pain. You can't put everybody in the same boat right. in that category. You can't. You know, you can't say neck pain. This is your set of exercises mm -hmm. because my problem may be completely different from so Brian's it, it problem is an and your problem. Individualized. Plan. That's what I was gonna say. Like I've I've done podcasts with you guys before. I've talked with you guys individually, and I've not just you guys, but people at Sports Plus as well. And I've learned that pretty much everything you guys do is not a one size fits all. It's mm -hmm. very individualistic to the person that you're working with, mm -hmm. and I think that's something that people need to understand. Is like if you're having neck pain or shoulder pain. They're not going to group you into this category and say, okay, here's your fix. Mm -hmm. See you later. They're really, you guys are really like dive into what's going on for that specific individual. Yes, we'll have, uh, glad you said that. We'll have, we mentioned the Stability 6 exercises, which is a, a kind of a core group of exercises we like to use for the neck. Uh, but each person is different. Uh, mm -hmm. we'll have, we have you know, a selection of all of our therapists, two or 3,000 exercises they'll pull from uh, to individualize it. We'll print a different program pull exercises off that list, make it just for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we still have to go in and individualize it if there's a position of pain or discomfort because uh, not every picture is going to fit the exact right. person. So we'll change each one uh, yeah. for each person. Yes, That's awesome. I know you guys mentioned COMT earlier, and you kind of alluded to that. Can you give me kind of really what that means and maybe some statistics on it? Yes, it's, uh, it stands for a Certification of Orthopedic Manual Therapist. Uh, so we're a Certified Orthopedic Manual Therapist trained under the Maitland method, which is an Australian-based mm -hmm. approach or European 
a method they call you a physiotherapist over <laughs> in that part of the world. Did you guys get to go to Australia to learn? <laughs> oh, I wish. That would have been awesome. It's a dream of mine. Uh, but we did get to travel. The hospital has been great at uh, helping Andy and myself uh, train in this method over three years, back around 2010, Ten. I believe. When we got certified. Nice. That's awesome. When we started that. Uh, so we you know, traveled from New York to uh, D.C. to East Tennessee to mm -hmm. Nashville to Franklin around the Atlanta area, um, even Orlando uh, mm -hmm. at one point. Uh, but they really helped us over the many years with the training and practice and people from all over the world to teach us uh, in this method. Uh, but we've since realized uh, there's only there's less than a thousand uh, COMTs in the United States. Um, oh, wow. So we're very fortunate at the hospital has sponsored us to allow us to become trained in this area. We have two in our system. <laughs> yes, we're very blessed to be able to have two. And when you th when you think of the United States, there's only a few thousand, would you say, not even quite a thousand? Just less than a thousand, yes, ma'am. Just less than a thousand and two just right here yeah. in West Tennessee. That's crazy. And by crazy, I mean awesome. <laughs> That's great. Uh, well, this has been really informative. I think people out there need to understand that if you're having neck pain, or not just neck pain, shoulder pain, arm pain, insert whatever kind of pain here. Call us first. Give, get, give them a call. They can help you. They want to help you. They don't want people to live in pain if they don't have to. So Look us up on the website. Yeah. Uh, I'll actually link that website in the description of the podcast along with the phone number. You can find all that information there. Uh, Brian, Kathy, Andy, thank you guys so much for coming in today. This has been a great conversation. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. And this has been another episode of We Talk Health. <laughs>